Hello everyone and welcome back to the Unemployment Journey where we'll be travelling across Europe's major leagues and trying to win as many trophies as possible and you can see here we've got Madeberg in the second round of the cup on the right our group stage for the Europa League which is with Monaco, Bournemouth and Bronby so you know Monaco probably the hardest team in that but you know Bournemouth for some reason really supercharged on this game but I don't know if they've got a lot of their original squad so hopefully I mean they've qualified for Europa League so they can't be too bad but yeah they're a bit of a tricky team in this game and then in Bundesliga we're doing all right four wins out of four uh, one of only two teams to do so we've got plus eight goal difference only conceded one goal all year which is why Benkovic is rated 7.73 for well, the games in the competition. Guiri with five goals in his four games. He got two each in the first two games. So, And then the winner in the last game. I'll just show you the results quickly because it's all green. As perfect as we could have liked it. 2-1 against Mines in the first game. Guiri with the penalty. They equalised, but then he got the winner. Sh well... They didn't equalise. We went 2-0 two well, two up and then they scored the sort of their goal. Then 4-0 against Fortuna Dusseldorf. Guiri twice. Benkovic and Mustafi both getting on the score sheet as well. Then 2-0 over Gladbach. Paolo Bernardo getting his first. And Ali Mami Torre scoring a belter from the edge of the area. Then we had a 1-0 a really tough win over Augsburg. They're a decent team. We were struggling to break them down all game, but we managed to do so in the 82nd minute. Guiri getting the winner. It was Ambrosini with the assist. So, you know, nice to see our left back, well, potential new starter left back, doing quite well. But we've got Stuttgart in the league coming up first. Obviously, it's a big, big run of games there with three Europa League games shoved in there. So, Fitness is going to be an issue. We've had a couple of knocks already in the season. Zivkovic has had a back fracture, so he's been out for the season so far. And he'll probably come back towards the end of this month. But you can see here from the fixtures, it's, it's tough. There's a lot of games coming up, especially when, like in these two months. And then November, everything shuts down um, for the World Cup. But then, yeah, it's... So this year is a, is a bit of a strange year because they're shoehorning the World Cup in there. So we're going to have a lot of fixture problems come to the well second half of the season. You can see there already January with seven games in there, which is just going to be massive. But I'll just cover the transfers quickly that we had. And the couple, well, there's only one out is Danny De Costa, who was our second choice right back. He's 29, thought 5 million for him is fine. We've got Estevez coming on free, so, who's on half of the wages. And I thought there's no point in having three left backs, and he's the weakest of the three of them. So I figured I'd just cash in while I could. So he's gone, and three new players have joined. And this fits the philosophy that I was thinking of, Signing some young talent. So Bertel's the first one for 3.1 million. He's going to be spending a lot of time with the under-19 team. But you can see there, potentially four and a half stars. So that little black star worth on the end. But he should be a really good rotational option. He's left-footed, so I'm going to train him to be on the right-hand side to cut in on a little bit more. And that should make him quite well-rounded on both wings. Then we've got Lucas Guyo. 16 year old from France we got him in for 3.5 and you know you can see there very similar player attack midfielder that can play on either wing so again I'm gonna try and make him a right like prefer him on the right side you can see there he's slightly younger than uh, Bertel but he's got in my opinion a bit more rounded stats a bit better stats and yeah, you know, I'm excited to see how he develops. You can see there, likes to get into the opposition box, gets forward whenever possible, plays one two. So he's got a few skills already, good mentals on him as well. 14 and some really key attributes. 
So his vision is quite high, first touch, his long shots, set pieces as well, all very good. So he's going to be spending probably most of the year with the under-19s. And then over the next one or two seasons, he'll start to make a bit of an impact in the first team. And then finally, Luca Wagner from Salzburg for five million. And I just see this as an absolute bargain. You look at him and fine they're not rating him to go that high they're look, looking at this as like almost as good as he's going to get but you can see there for an 18 year old fantastic dribbling first touch passing teamwork vision determination everything dictates tempo already so i think he'll make a really good option in the middle of the pitch potentially i might convert him a little bit further forward into an attacking midfielder or maybe into a winger as well because his crossing ability is not too bad maybe on the left hand side where he can sort of cut in a bit more that's the idea but again it depends on how we how we can do that and you can see there 53 million pounds spent 53 million pounds in so net effect is about zero but at the same point Zivkovic and Paolo Bernardo were two players who we had organized well beforehand um, both of whom came from Benfica actually didn't didn't notice that until now but both of them we had in points last year same with Ramon as well so not too many new faces but again a lot a lot of these players you brought into you know 20 year old 18 year old 21 year old 21 year old 20 year old 17 16 18 they're young players that we can sort of mould and as some of the older players transition out, these players will be ready to step in. And players like Bertel, Guyo, Wagner, they'll all be homegrown registered. And that's something that we're actually struggling with in the team with at the moment. Had to do the Europa League and at 25 possible spots could only register 19 players because of the amount of homegrown players that we need but under 21 players won't don't need registering so if well unless they've been there for about a year so players like Guyo, Wagner, jo Jose Silva they do still need registering but next year they won't so that's what I'm looking at so if we do get Champions League football which is what I'm hoping for if we keep up this run of form then we can stack up the squad a little bit more but let's take you into the match and show you the team for the game against Stuttgart and we've got trapping goal Torre, Mustafi, Benkovic and Ramon making up their back line Skasibar, Sal, Bernardo through the middle Samitza, Kostic on the left and Guiri up front and they've got a decent team here but I think we're better than them and given the form, I think I think we're the better team. I genuinely do. I've I'm really happy with the way this team looks. Sal is still a little bit upset that we didn't sell him. He still wants to go to a bigger club, but obviously if we can get Champions League football, then I think that you know we can potentially convince him to cut well to stay, um, and that's. That's essentially the idea. But we'll see how we go. We'll see how well Camille develops. We'll see how well some of the other centre midfielders develop. Obviously, we've got a few players that we've brought in that can play in the middle of the pitch that can come in in place of him. Obviously, not to his level of ability yet. But at the same time, they've got plenty of potential and we can develop them. And they should be in my opinion, potentially better as Trap. Makes a decent save there and they're getting a couple of chances away and keeping a lot of the ball in the opening five minutes. But, yeah, that's the relative idea of what I'm planning on doing. And unlike Venlo where we left off to two years, I want to stay here for maybe three, maybe four seasons as Ramon's picked up a small injury but he seems to be recovering from it. Just tell him to get creative. We haven't created a chance in this game so far. Which 
isn't great, something that we need to improve on, but we are clinical when we do create chances. Bernardo into Sal, and that's a goal. So two shots, one of them found the back of the net. Sal, and that's really why I wanted to keep him. He's fantastic on the edge of the box. And you can see here, Savitzer picks up the ball, keeps it in, into Palo Bernardo, and that's been blocked. But he finds Sal quickly, and he's got half the goal to aim for, and he just places that into the bottom corner. Great finish that. And again, potentially this could mean five wins from five which would be a fantastic start to the season. But, again, with potential injuries, with potential fixture congestion, I want to avoid so many small injuries that sort of derailed the season towards the end, um, especially so, sort of towards that March, February, March time, where we just we were just exhausted. We played so many games... We picked up so many injuries towards the end so that were just season. Well, that were out for the rest of the season. So I want to avoid that this year. I want to make sure that the players stay fit, that the players are healthy, and that they can last the full season. We've got a re we've got a much smaller squad than last season, but in my opinion, the depth of the squad is better. If that makes sense. So while we might have more players last year in sort of some positions that doesn't we I feel like we've got much better rounded players that can come in as options off the bench or in games where things might not matter so much as Kostic's header hits the bar now Sal's on the board again but Rupp picks it up who's actually a former player of ours but I might take off Ramon at half time just to make sure that he's okay he said twisted knee earlier and he doesn't look too fit as we've got a penalty here we're listening to VAR and we've awarded the penalty and it should be Gawiri to take and it is he scored one this season and he's missed that one it was a good save by the keeper that but Really should be fine in the back end of the net there. And that would have given us a two-goal lead going into half-time. Not the best corner in from Kostic either. But still with the ball. And we can see that there. He's gone. And it's not in the corner. It's high. But keeper somehow managed to well, put that over the bar. Sabitz in the box. That's been blocked. Torre on the ball. That's blocked. Asgassiwa will pick it up and play it back to Mustafa. We've got two minutes to play left of this half, and that's half time. In my opinion, we've been the better team. And what I will do is Ambrosine is going to come off Ramon and just keep it up. Ramon, obviously, I, don't, I really don't want to aggravate that knee injury if he does have one. And I think as a second choice, Ambrosini is a very very good option I, in my opinion I think it's better what I want to do is almost secure him early to a point that I can just say alright that's that position sorted for next year I don't want his value going too high so that you know, it's, we, we get a little bit priced out because I think that happened with one or two players before I think um, yeah it was um, Pedro Henrique that, that happened to but we're going to make sure that doesn't happen in the case of Ambrosini as Rupp finds Farah and they've equalised that was a great finish by Fora alright we're going to demand some more and that's why I wanted to score the penalty just because I didn't I knew I had a feeling something like this would happen Sunny into Rupp it's found Farah and um, Trap can't keep it out. But yeah, I mean, that's why I wanted a new goalkeeper coming into the season. Just. Yeah, just. I, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see Trap keeping up that sort of like level. 
and quality this se this year. I think next season, if we do get Champions League football, goalkeeper is the absolute priority for us. And I know we've kept some clean sheets. It's Ambrosini's given a foul in the box, and it's going to be a penalty. Yeah, and this might be our first defeat of the season if they can convert it. It's going to be Mebry, and he's found the bottom corner. We're going to make two changes. So, doesn't look like Kostic is playing well. So, what we'll do is Baldassar is going to come up for Guiri. Sabitz is moving to the left as an inverted winger attack. And Burhan as a winger attack. We'll move there. I will also move into something like this, where Bernardo is an advanced playmaker and Sal as a Mazala and we go Demand more and let's hopefully go attacking and get something from this game as they've got a deep free kick and this doesn't look good as Mebri finds the back of the net with the header I don't know what Trap was doing off his line I saw him with his line and just feared the worst in case that goes in in case it was a great ball. And it was. And we can see here. Ball comes in, he's not on his line, and he's just hope just flung himself at it, but it's not. Yeah, that's not what we want to see. As he's tipped that one over. But this second half they've been all over us. And this is how we lose our unbeaten start to the season. We've got 10 minutes left to rescue this. But they're coming at us again. Medbury. Put the ball in. He's kept it in. Ambrosini clears. Come on. Counter attack. Let's go. Sabato on the ball. He's found Burhan. What can he do from here? His shot's blocked. He's still got the ball. He put the ball. No, he's played it back to Toro, but it's not the best ball back. Lose a bit of momentum there. We've got five minutes to rescue this. It doesn't look like we will. Burhands can't keep, can't get possession there. As we've played it back, Toro into Burhan. Come on now, that's a good tackle there. And we've got four minutes of additional time remaining. And we need to do some we need to do something we need to do something quickly. Burhan on the right now. Into Sabita. What can he do? Still got the ball into Palo Bernardo. And that's wide. Come on now. Minute left. Sabita into Sal. And that's in. But referee's got his flag up. And that's not going to count. Offside from Sal. Baldassar has been tripped by Sane. I think this is going to be it. Last chance. Oh no, we've got a free kick here. Oh wait, no, this is just the offside confirmation. Just about offside, doesn't doesn't matter anyway. We're still going to lose the game. Sabitzer puts the ball in. Baldassara. Well, he's got he's got his goal. Um, and we can see that again. Great ball in by Sabitzer. Peels off at the back post. Follows that in. He did that in a couple of games before as well. And yeah, I, mean, I just think he's I just think he's a fantastic poacher. But we've got a chance to rescue this. Come on. Burhan in the box and that's been cleared and that should be the end of the game yep that's it that's a 3-2 loss we had 4 clear cut chances in the game we had that penalty I think if that penalty went in that's that changes this whole game but yeah gutting to lose the winning start to that Guiri did not play well at all missed the penalty that's not good enough getting a bit complacent in there but yeah, it's just 
Not that good, really, is it? And there we go. First loss of the season against Stuttgart. And what we'll do is... I'm looking at that Bayern Munich game. Yeah. I'm really looking at that Bayern Munich game. We'll do that Bayern Munich game, and then we'll do the Bronby game afterwards. But that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for future episodes. And make sure you hit that notification bell as well so you don't miss a video. And I'll see you for that Bayern Munich game. Thank you.